Okay, welcome back. Um, so in the last video we talked about uh, documents. We opened a couple of files and the important thing to note about those is that they were separate files on disk. If you remember we had document A and document B as we have here again. Um, but in this video what we're going to look at is opening multiple views of the same document. So that's the same file on disk and we'll also look at uh, editor views and player views and how the editor and player views uh, interact with each other. So for this video we're just going to work with one um, document here and oops silly me this isn't the document I was going to use uh, this, this is the document I was going to use. Okay so we have here <coughs> one document and one view of the document and I opened this as I opened it just before by dragging and dropping from the file explorer. So to open another view of this what we can do is if we try and drag and drop again like this we'll get this message asking uh, telling us that it's already open and asking if we want to open another view of it. If we say yes here we'll get another view of this document but the important thing is to note it's only a view of the same data, the same document. Um, and we can also do that by uh, Control shift c to clone the view. So when we have two views of the same document, what that means is that everything we do to one view is actually being done to all views of that document. So if I select this car here, we can see that over in this other view it's been selected as well. If I select a whole bunch of them same thing. Undo, redo. Everything is all just working on exactly the same data. So um, these are editor views and of course there is an integrated player in Rube so we can open a player to actually run this scene and see what it's going to do before we export it to our program and we can do that by clicking on the red arrow in the toolbar or by using control R <coughs> and that will open up a player view and we can tell the difference between player views by, by the fact that they have this run in brackets here and the background color is a little bit bluish whereas the editor views are black. Uh, if you want to customize these and make them a little bit more noticeable you can customize them to your heart's content in the um, options dialog there. So we want to look at the relationship between these two views, uh, between these two types of views. So I'll just get rid of one of these for now. So we have editor view and player view and I'll just uh, tile them to make better use of screen space. And editor views and player views have the same, the same means of um, moving around and zooming and panning and the home key and so on is all the same. But obviously they're player views so when the player view is active we see this bunch of icons here become active. Uh, when an editor view is active these other icons over here are active. So when a player view is active we can reload the scene, uh, play the scene like this. So we can see the physics simulation runs there. Uh, pause and single step. So we can also pause with the space bar to play and pause. And when we're paused we can use this button here or we can also use shift and the space key together to single step through the simulation like that. Um, and of course we can use mouse joint to drag things around as you obviously saw. So that's pretty straightforward. Now this other button here is not quite so straightforward so we'll take a look at that and what this button does is it modifies the simulation speed depending on this other uh, numerical input that we have here. So at the moment the simulation is running at normal speed so it's just one so we can see when we throw things around it uh, runs at normal speed 
Now if we toggle this on by clicking the button, it's still running at normal speed because this is set at 1. But we can change this to 2 to run things at double speed. Or let's try 4. So you can see that things are running much quicker now. And this can be quite handy to, to fast forward the simulation if you're continuously uh, running the same simulation and you want to get it to a point where something interesting happens you can use this to quickly fast forward it. So in that case what you would do is you'd typically leave this on 4 and then you would just toggle this off and on so you can toggle it off and on like that. And um, obviously you can't just keep increasing this number forever um, and getting a faster and faster simulation because at some point the computer that you're running the simulation on won't be able to keep up with the number of um, simulation steps per second that you're trying to to get it to do. So in that case um, I think this PC we might actually be able to go all the way up to 9. Oops. try this. Oops, remember to keep this on if you're trying to do that. Okay, so this is running at 9.1 sp times speed and the thing that I was trying to show you is not happening. So what we're going to have to do is, um, I'll just come over here and we need some more cars to see. So <coughs> and this will also demonstrate the reloading function. So what happens is we can go back to the editor view and we can change something but nothing happens in the player view immediately of course because what happens is when you run the player or when you re reload it um, it makes a copy of everything in the editor view and sets up a player view to run. So if I do control R now we can see that this time uh, we've we've taken the new view across here and just as another little demonstration I'll open another player view so I can clone this player view just the same as I can cl clone the editor views but there's a little bit of a difference because unlike with editor views when you clone an editor view you're seeing the same the exact same data so if I clone this again just as an illustration uh, cloning the editor view here, we'll see exactly the same view here. But when I clone this player view, what we see here is each player view is separate. So the one in the bottom here is running, obviously it's moving around. But when we cloned the one at the top, all that did was copy the, the, the state from the editor view again to start a new player view. So there's a little bit of a difference there. The player views do not look at the same data, whereas the editor views, they do look at the same data all the time. For the same document, that is. Right, so get rid of that and let's bring this back up. So what I wanted to do here was, let's see if we can run this at double speed. Okay, we can still run this at double speed, not bad. Now if I start bringing this up, there will come a point where this PC is not able to... Okay, so we have a lot more cars bum bumping around in this scene now. And <coughs> when we get to the point where this CPU can't handle what we're asking it to do, which is uh, when this value is 1, it's 60 frames per second, at least with the default settings. And so if we set it to 4.6 or set it to 4.5, that's going to be something like 240, 270 frames per second that we, we're asking the CPU to do. And at this point, it, it can't quite handle that. And we can tell that by this little red display that shows up here telling us how many skips, uh, how many steps have been skipped at this point. So it's not changing too much. So that tells us that at this rate it's it's almost keeping up but if we increase this a lot there'll come a point where this just grows and grows and grows so that's letting us know that it's probably 
um, instead of the 270 frames per second that we're trying to get it to do uh, I'd say it's probably only doing about 220 maybe maybe a little bit more so if you see this showing up what you can do is um, bring it back down a little bit and okay so we're about we're about at parity here with the number of steps we can manage and the number of steps we're desiring and if I bring this down a little bit more you'll see that suddenly this number decreases very quickly and that means that we've got to the point where this CPU can run the simulation there we go so with this number of cars and uh, the the sort of all the calculations that we're doing here with swishing everything around like this about three times the normal speed of 60 frames per second is all we can is all the CPU can manage and I can hear the uh, CPU starting to to warm up there so uh, that is player views and we're back to you know no step skip now everything is happy <coughs> and I'll just close both of these documents and we'll have a look at one more different one that has some images in it so this is another one of the files that I've set up to use as a example for these video tutorials and this one has some images in it and I just wanted to use this scene and we'll open a player view for this scene to demonstrate that even though we have these images in here so this red and the the car wheels here are uh, PNG files that are attached to these bodies they're not showing up by default because the default settings is to show only what box 2D sees only the, the fixtures that that it would see or only what you would see with the debug drawer um, but we can turn some more information on here with this last button in the player toolbar and if I click that I think the default is to have everything on and everything is backing images, body images, fixtures, bodies and joints so we can zoom in here and we can see the joints um, we can see obviously the fixtures were there already now we can see the body nubs and we can see um, images so you might not want all of those on for example we can turn fixtures off uh, we can turn the joints off and so on so you can customize this to whatever you happen to be wanting to see at at the time and uh, so just before we finish up I should probably mention the difference between a backing image and a body image is that backing images are just images that are not attached to a body so they're just static uh, I guess you could imagine that they're attached to a static body because they don't move but sometimes you want to differentiate between those um, in this display so just to show you how this runs whoops where is it oh. yeah so we can see that um, all of these images are what do they call them body images because they're attached to a body and they move around so we don't actually have any static images in this view all right that's going to do it for this video and i'll see you next time